Hey, if you haven't noticed, behind me there's an arch. Yep, an arch. So, I just popped it up here. It's not epoxied or glassed down yet, but it's about to be. And I must say, I'm proud of myself. I'm actually patting myself on the back. I sat here for a while trying to figure out how to get this thing mounted. It's too short. I have to add 14 inches in height. So when you walk out here, it's not at eye level. It's up here. So you can put hammocks to it. You can actually uh, use it for solar. You can use it for dinghy davits even. I can actually hang my dinghy off the back, which is what I plan to do. Hey, guys. So Aldo and I are out here doing the masks. So here's a product called Bondrite. It's a... Uh, it's C-IC33 Arrow, and uh, that is a really good etching cleaner and anti-corrosion uh, protection. So it really, really gets in there. So he's going to start to apply it with this Scotch-Brite pad, a brown one, and that really gets in here and starts to take care of all the corrosion and all that kind of good stuff. So the trick is you have to dilute this with about um, three to one. So, it, so a quart will go into a gallon of water if you want to use a quart all at once. You want to leave it on for no more than maximum five minutes, but because it's so hot out here, I don't think we're going to get five minutes. I think we're getting more like maybe two minutes, which they say two to five minutes is enough time for the acid to really sink in and do its job. So let's do it, Aldo. They do say don't have it dry on the metal. Uh, that umbrella has really come in handy. 100 degrees plus with about a 90% humidity. Anyway, so as you can see, uh, there was a lot of corrosion on this mask. Now there's no more white flaky stuff in between all the little grooves and cracks and dips. So yeah, that looks like it worked out pretty well. So there's the repair I did yesterday. Um, so we still have to fill in all the holes and create a whole new layer of the epoxy here so we can sand it all smooth. This is very, very bumpy. So once we put the 407 thickened epoxy, uh, it should smear over real nice and it should sand out really good. This is where the boom was and as you can see there's a lot of corrosion through here. So that's all been fixed up. So we're going to smear that around and then the new height of the boom, believe it or not on this new design, is close to 8 feet while the old boom was at 4 feet. So it's going to go a lot higher.
to a big project along with all the other big projects to be honest with you but uh, this one here is going to be repurposing my arch I built back when I first bought the trimaran I built this incredible uh, honeycomb arch and I should get the composite to show you I'm gonna be right back so I just jumped into my composite pile and I found the piece I was looking for. This is a one inch carbon fiber, even though it's pretty faded out now, it's seen a fair bit of sun, but it's a one inch aluminum honeycomb carbon fiber board. And so I built the whole thing out of this. I had a bunch of this at one point for some projects I was doing a while back on another boat. And I really like the stuff. It's pretty damn indestructible. Basically built the top out of this exactly and that's why it's that thickness. And it's only about 12 inches there and about 12 or so on the uprights. And it's very, very strong, very rigid. I'm gonna cant this off the back of the boat. So I bonded this to the trimaran a little while back and it worked really, really well. It held my two 500 watt uh, bifacial solar panel. But now that I'm gonna hang a dinghy on this, I need a little more side to side stability, even though the solar panels were in total 140 pounds. And that's about the weight of my dinghy at the most. I've got a pretty lightweight electric motor dinghy. I've got a Torquedo on the back normally, and I do keep it on there while I have it hoisted. And the dinghy is a catamaran dinghy that's all inflatable except for the transom. So there's not a lot of weight. It's maybe 80 pounds. So it's pretty good for that. This is only five foot, I think it's five foot six in height. So between the bottom angled feet up to there, it's only five six. And so I need to raise it um, about 14 inches. So I've got to build a base that will be 14 inches taller. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to build the base on the aft part of that wall up there, right where that, pretty much where that, that mark is, is kind of where I have to cut into, find the right uh, position to cut, bring it up there, mount it, do a lot of stability for it, build it in real strong, and uh, we're going to be good. Woo. Well, I just got into a project that I haven't been looking forward to at all. But like all the projects I get into, you just got to power through it. Some are fun and some are not that fun. Anyway, you might uh, see a lot of rubble that I have on the ground and also a lot of rubble I have outside that I just took out all that stuff in the parking lot there. So what I've actually done is I've been working underneath there, under the floor. These are the last remnants that was the original boat. So what I did was I exposed the water tanks and I have a couple items still here. And I have my battery bank, which we worked on earlier. We made a new mount for it, so all the batteries are up at an angle as you see and then the back portion here had cabinetry and the floor had had like a shelving system part of the galley the old galley and so i just tore all that out so as you can see i have a lot of wire to go through and organize uh, basically all over the place so now my goal is to clean everything up patch holes if i see where the screws were in the wall and we're just going to clean up all the walls and make them look a lot more professional. I'm going to paint this a nice bright white. Yeah, this is kind of my last part of the infrastructure that was original with the boat. And I'm going to now organize it with composite lightweight stuff that will not rot. And behind there will be all the electronic switches and uh, controllers for the solar and inverter. I'll have all that back there. Lickety split. Yeah, lickety split. Anyway, I'm busy. Hey guys, well look, uh, we've been preparing the mast with the yellow prep, which is also called the Bonrite 33 Arrow. So we've already prepped the mast. We had the yellow prep completely uh, applied and we waited for it to dry and washed it off accordingly. Then we did a bunch of uh, body work, which is basically filling in all the little holes and textures to make it really, really smooth and nice. And then today, early, we actually took a 220 grit, did the whole mass. It feels baby smooth now. So after that was done, we washed it all down with a degreaser. And now we have come back with the last stage before we start applying the primer. And that will be the Bonrite 
Allodyne. So it goes by either that name or Allodyne. So there's an Alloprep and an Allodyne, but this is another uh, way they list it. It's a 1201 Arrow. Right now, that's what they're working on. They're putting the Allodyne on, which is the last stage before you put primer and you start painting. So as you can see, it turns it a slight yellowy gold color and we try to wait about a minute to up to three minutes. It creates a really, really good bonding surface and uh, it's ideal for primer to come in directly after this. So this is what we're working on now. We're doing the whole mast and we've already done one pass on the other side and they turned it over and this is the underneath side. And as you can see, all of the the imperfections have been nicely smoothed out. If you saw the earlier uh, example of this mast, it was just horrific. It was really beat up, lots of corrosion, lots of holes we had to patch. As you can see, we had a winch right here and that's all patched up. So overall, it looks amazing. So here's all the corrosion we had. Now it's been all filled. It's totally smooth. You can see it kind of there, but when you feel it, you don't feel any imperfections. And once we start painting, we're gonna be using some really, really good products that should look amazing. So our next stage is actually, we're gonna be using All Grip Max Core Primer. What it does, really, really good coating that will keep corrosion from ever developing. So that's our next stage. So right now we're doing the last parts of the Allodyne, and then we're gonna be doing the Max Core Primer, which is right down here. I'll show you the can. Here's the Max Core Primer that we will be using. Yeah, so that stuff uh, they say is worth the money if you want a really great result. This mast is uh, costing a few bucks to restore, but it should be really, really nice, and I can't wait to see the end result. And we will be doing, directly after the Max Core Primer, we will be doing a finished primer by All Grip, which is very, very fine and thin. And then we'll look for any possible imperfections. We'll fix them if we find anything. And then we'll be doing the top coat, which will be a Matterhorn White. Can't wait to see that. Joe and Michelle are leaving. They've been here as long as I have. They got here in early January. Anyway, so we're having a little get together for them. All the boaters that are still in town are uh, giving them a farewell. They're splashing tomorrow. So here's a little barbecue thing we're all joining. Anyway. Oh, he knows the street back. Oh, yeah. You, be so you heard that all the way over here. Oh, hey, my God. Here. I really did. Yeah, sure. <laughs> but, but it makes a difference. We pulled out like three degrees. Yeah. And the boat has like no heels. The boat just has zero. Because the sea on such a small. Hey, Blackie. What are you doing, buddy? It's great. You know, with good speed. No, you get the good speed. You get the good speed. hang 30. Joe is the guy over there in the teal colored blue shirt. No, I don't know. And Michelle is this gal right here. Hi. In 1981. A mad scientist.
I, I sat and I pondered it and eventually I came out with this complex angle with an extension. I outdid myself, got it right the first time. Well, I did. Pretty stoked. Anyway, so now it's time to epoxy it down and build structure around it. So what I plan to do, even though it's a weird angle and all that, I plan to build cabinetry around it and whatever else to really lock it down. That's going to be what I'm doing right now on what arguably might be the hottest day I have seen down here. I've got water droplets all over my face, but hey, it is the hot time in Mexico and I am trying to get this job done. I've got just over two weeks left for my goal to get in the water and the boat's not painted, the interior is not done painted, the glass isn't on, the decks aren't done, but the good thing is I'm pretty confident all of these, except for the perfect paint job on the hulls, will take less time than you might think. So we'll be good. Anyway, a lot of details are going into this in the next two weeks or so, I think we can pull it off. So right now I'm going to start mounting the arch and get that 2 by 4 out of the way. That's just holding it up so it won't fall into the parking lot. Let me show you how I how I creatively um, got the height I needed and put it in place. So basically I cut a line in the wall which will help support it and that's my 14 inch mark, that green line, and pretty much I cut the angle onto that as well as onto this side and it fits very very close tolerance. I mean I, I'm kind of cut it bigger thinking I would have a lot more need for that gap kind of regret it now a little bit. I hate using more epoxy than I really need to, but overall it's looking great. And so there's a little gap on the bottom down there. It's not much. But then on the other side, I pretty much got it spot on. So once these are all epoxy and glassed down, I will build some cabinetry around it. This is really looking good. And then we're going to dial in the rest of the wall and make it look really nice. Other than the mast, everything large is on the boat. Yes, everything big that I had intended to build, not the bathroom, not the roof, all this stuff has already been done. Now it's a matter of details and a little more labor to get things dialed in just right before we paint. But once we paint, it should come along really, really quickly and wait till you see the flooring as we put it down along with the paint job. You will see this boat come together lickety split. Hey, if you haven't liked or subscribed, jump in. We'd really appreciate it. We have lots more episodes to show you on how this build turns out. Take that smug little smile off your adorable fucking face. The fame's gotten to your head, man.